Hi, this is Dr. Graves with the Cal State Northridge Geography Department. This is a video tutorial to help you complete the so-called Ghetto Lab in Geography 107. To get started, uh, make sure you have a Moodle open and a second window, perhaps using a different browser. I'm using Internet Explorer here. Type in my CSUN software into a search window. Select my CSUN software. When this page opens, scroll down to log in to my CSUN software and enter your username and your password. Hopefully this window appears quickly. Select ArcGIS folder and from the list of programs click ArcMap. Generally there are uh, some NAG screens. Always click Allow and then down here at the bottom click Open when it, you're prompted to launch .ica file. Wait a moment. ArcMap should begin to launch. Another security warning. Choose Permit Use. Click and ArcMap GIS should open. At the welcome screen, click Cancel. Click File and Open. At this dialog window, click Computer. Select Geog Share. You can double click on that. Double click on Geog 107. Double click on the Ghetto folder. Double click on the Black Ghetto file. This map should open. What you see in the map window here is a map of Wayne County, Michigan. That's where Detroit is in Michigan. If you scroll out a little bit, you can see the surrounding counties here in Michigan. I'm going to zoom back. And if you want to, you can turn the interstate highway or the highways layer on. Or you can turn on the base map as well and turn off the counties layer. And then you can see where this um, county and its boundaries are in relationship to, um, say, Windsor, Canada, and some of the other places. I'm going to turn it off because it's a little bit um, distracting. In order to make sure that you can understand uh, how to use the attribute table, which is sort of like the spreadsheet that's attached to this map of census tracts. I want you to right click on the words Wayne County, Michigan. From the drop down menu, select Open Attribute Table. And you are expected to read that there are a certain number of attributes, meaning census tracts, available in this county. Uh, you have to answer a question just to make sure that you can read this data. You can pause and answer the question right now. I'm clicking unselect to unhighlight all of these. Then I want you to use the field calculator and statistics tools uh, for this exercise. Right click on the total population 2010 column header here and from the drop-down window select Statistics. The Statistics window gives you a histogram or a frequency distribution and a number of statistics for that column of data. I want you to examine the values in the Statistics window and answer a couple of questions in Moodle or your learning management software so that I can be certain that you understand how to use this tool. After you've answered the question, then you can dismiss these two windows and right click once again in the table of contents on the Wayne County, Michigan layer and from the drop down menu select properties. This window should appear. We are going to change the symbology to quantities 
to make a choropleth or a thematic map of a value. The value that we're going to map first is the total number of black people, and that is represented by BLK underscore TOT, so black total. And I want you to click uh, OK here and notice that the map appears somewhat in a checkerboard fashion that you have um, census tracts with a large number of black folks between basically 3,000 and 5,000 and some with very few black folks between 0 and 509 in that, uh, in that map. What's important here to recognize is that although some of these areas, and I'm going to zoom in, may have, say, less than 500 black folks in total in it, if there are, say, 498 of the people that live in this census tract are black, this map becomes misleading. It suggests incorrectly that this area is devoid of black people, when in fact it may not be. It may be almost 90% black, but there's just not very many people. On the other hand, one of these districts up here that appears in full red may have uh, 3,000 black folks in it and therefore appearing in the darkest color, but if there are 10,000 people in that census tract, it would be very unlikely. It may be only one-third African American or black, and therefore the map would be misleading you to think that it is a majority black district. So what I'm going to have you do now is to right click once again on the Wayne County, Michigan layer and go to the properties and switch the value field from black total to black PCT. That's BLC underscore PCT. And now we have black percent, which ranges from 0% black to 100% black. Uh, but this natural breaks a classification system isn't as useful as we would like. So click on classify and from the classification method drop down when you menu select equal interval and what that will do is make each of the classification systems have the equal interval so it's an interval of 20% 0 to 20 20 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 and 80 to 100 percent Notice the histogram in the background. You will, ask, you will be asked a question on it later. Click OK and click OK. Now notice that the map has changed. These areas in the darkest red have very high percentages, 80 to 100 percent African American or black, and these areas in yellow have less than 20 percent black. This is a very interesting pattern, as you shall see, and what's also very interesting is how very few of these districts have intermediate color ramps. So the oranges. Note that some of these neighborhoods are 80% black on one in one neighborhood and then less than 20% black in an adjacent neighborhood. The last thing that I'm going to have you do in this segment of the exercise is to once again click on the table of contents on the words Wayne County, Michigan and open the attribute table once again. This time scroll over to black percent. If you need to scroll you can do that. And right click and open the statistics window again. Here, notice the pattern of this frequency distribution or histogram. Also, take a close look at the statistics in the statistics window. Answer a question or two in the learning management software. And uh, this marks the end of the first of this video tutorial.